Um, did you watch AEW? Uh, yeah, I watched it this morning. Yeah. All right. So let me talk. This is, I want to talk about some beer because this. Did, did, Joe, what was the rating? It's atrocious. Seven hundred. They, they, they lost twenty percent. They're on. Yeah. Last night for for the week <laughs> before, which is well, which is a tra- well, and it's not it's not unexpected. Okay, for people with any common sense, because nobody cares about the Japanese wrestlers because you don't know. Nobody knows who these people are. You can't pretend that that your echo chamber. You know, fans are, 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 are like anybody's going to know who these things are. But but the show opened seven sixty seven sixty one exactly yeah. seven sixty one thousand terrible. Um, let me tell the bro. The show opened with everything that's wrong with AEW compared to WWE. All right, Chris Jericho's wrestling Ortiz in a hair versus hair match. <laughs> they didn't even have a package to b- before this started to explain why they're having a hair versus hair match. And if you missed the deal. You know, what, like the, the the build of this was was nothing minimal at all. There, there's nothing, right? So they do the hair versus hair match. It's a brawl. Everybody and their mothers interfering and stuff. For thing they do some false finishes. So then El Fuego del Sol, and I immediately knew it was Sammy Guevara because I said, "There's no way that's Fuego." I bet that's Sammy, and he comes in and interferes, and Jericho Jericho wins, right? So Fuego screws <clears throat> screws over Ortiz. They go up the ramp. He pulls the mask off. It's Sammy and. Bro, Ortiz, <laughs> I did, this is unbelievable. If you got screwed, okay, he stood in the ring and shaved his own head. Did you see this? Yeah. That's On ha- what planet would a baby face do that? That's happened before, though. Chavo shaved his own head in a hair shaved, match. Shaved his own head? In WCW, after on a screw yeah. Job? Yeah, I think Eddie cheated to beat him, and Chavo went nuts and shaved his own head. Bro, that made it. Okay, this is Santana Ortiz, street guys from Brooklyn. All right, you know, it's like he's gonna shave his. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I just, Maybe they're trying to show him as a little unhinged or whatever. I would have done this a little. I would have done this differently. I would have. Here's what I would have done. Okay, they 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 wins the match. El Fuego del Sol comes. He goes goes up the ramp. Hugs Jericho. They're celebrating. They're looking. What the? A-? Ortiz is so pissed. You know, runs at him. Tackles Sammy in the fight. They're pulling him off again. He pulls the mask off, and we find it is Sammy. Holy shit, because there's no why would Sammy do that? And just come and reveal it's him, right? Then they beat up Ortiz, put him on the thing, go, and then for the heat, shave the guy's head. That's how I would have laid it out. You would have gotten good heat on that. There was there was no like good the, the heat on this could have been way better. You know if if you, if you would have laid this out differently. But him just going, hey, it was me and not enough for you to do It's like okay, why did you could have ran in and done that? It's like dressing up like him. It's like you should not have. Been willing to reveal that sh- that's you that did it. You would like the heels would would try to keep the mask on and didn't see it, and then blame Fuego del Sol. Now it's just like Sammy revealed, oh, that was me. We, we screwed it. I, I don't know. Do you agree with that? Like, what what what, what way do you think worked better? This way or the way I just laid out? I would have beat the out of them all, left them all laying, and then and then you, cut the hair. You, yeah, you cut, you cut his hair, right? Like, obviously, and even like the way he cut his hair, he ended up cutting himself. Uh, right. but like, so if, if if you'd if you'd got color on him while you were cutting his hair, that again gives you more heat. You could take that blood, wipe it on you, do all that heel, and then take the mask off right at the very end. Wait, he cut him. So, he cut himself cutting his hair. Yeah. Did he have the clippers it. backwards? <laughs> no, like. No. All right. So next, well, he so, was all, got all those dreads in he? So he was like pulling out. Pulling it. And, Let me ask you guys this right. just real quick. Was there ever? Was there any parties that thought Jericho might lose the match and shave his head at any time? Um, I thought initially that's why they were doing the match because it's bowl patch. Right. Uh, but they, they they did they did well to trick to trick people into that. Look, so this is why this is the difference between WWE and AEW. AEW responds to everything in the wrestling community. So the wrestling community started sharing photos of Jericho's bowl patch, and then they book a hair versus hair match because they feel like they're going to get a, a rating off it when it's just a community on 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 Twitter. It's stupid. They they booked the whole match because those bowl patch photos were around. Is that unless that's a coincidence, which I don't think it is. Yeah. Um. So next, uh, they do. All right. So they do a video package for this thing, and it's a comedy thing because they have the People's Court theme playing. This is a stupid. This is like like they the, Dave talked. Everybody talked about how great this MJF Wardlow two year long angle was. Right. Two weeks later, uh, both of the characters have been devalued. Wardlow's doing comedy stuff to do the people court theme in the video video page like it's a joke. This is the stupidest angle ever where it's a clash action lawsuit. He's supposed to wrestle 20 security guards. Dude, I'm sorry. (laughs) 
I don't care how, how strong Wardlow's character is supposed to be. Anybody that's worked in the clubs, 20 security guards would kill this guy with their, his bare hands. <laughs> if this was anything remotely close to being real. It's like, I don't, you know, this is, this is stupid. They do the exact same thing they've been doing where he's just beating up the security guards, but it's a match this week. Afterwards, he grabs Sterling to toss him inside the ring, and Dan Lambert and Scorpio Sky stood in a luxury box. Then, for some reason, Matt Hughes and Tyrell Woodley was Matt. What's wrong with Matt Hughes? What was? Oh, he's, he, he got a uh, he got hit he by a, a train, a big, didn't he? Yeah, he got hit by a train years ago, and it messed him up. Which is why, like Matt Hughes is hitting the ring. He can't even like. I think this guy's marbles. Like his brain's mess mush. Like for from head trauma, you know. And they do a thing where he, they you know they, they don't they don't do anything. They shove uh, what's his name and the Mark Sterling guy and power bombs Mark Sterling. It's this, this, bro. You could you you could not. They they had they have no clue what to do with people. Like to make to, to elevate them. They have no they have no idea. You, you, like you, 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 had no, do, go ahead. you had to do a non finish here. You had to have him like going through some of the security using a chair and and things like that and beating getting through some of the security, but then. You had to have the next guy he's working with as the security guard and right. set up like that. That's how you do this. Like one of the security guards is whoever you like, you know, like Lance Archer or whatever. Well, like, well, like, you're, 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 the guy's supposed to be elevated and he's in an angle with Mark Sterling. It's like, dude, you're, you're this, this guy's that Wardlow went down on the went, went backwards on the card after he beat MJF. He's not he's not going forwards. He's got this is terrible. Um, Will Osprey and Dax Harwood are being booked against each other just because for the simple fact that everything's going to have a five star match. I don't know why these guys are wrestling each other. Um, I guess there was they had a six man on Rampage because they attacked him. And so there's there's no substance to this angle at all. They're just having a match. Will Osprey loses six man on 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 his date on Dynamite. Yeah, yeah he <laughs> lost right. Yeah, yeah, he debuted and lost. <laughs> so then the funniest thing is after the match. These guys, I guess, okay, here are the guys' names. The United Empire members, Kyle Fletcher, Mark Davis, Great O'Conn, and Aaron Henner enter the ring. Then Cash, Trent, Br Britta, and Rocky Romero run out to help Hardwood, and then Orange Cassidy's music comes in the ring. And then these guys who are supposed to be being built up, the United Empire and everything, they just leave the ring. And the funniest thing about this is that this is like shows how fans, like the, the why this show did a number, Excalibur during the run-in is trying to go over the names of all these guys and try to explain them to who they are to try to make it to try to make, make them seem like they're somebody. And he's talking fast, and he's like, that, "That's so and so. This is so. That, look at that. This was like a. This was like a. Honestly, this was like a parody of a segment, in my opinion. And everybody always says that I, I hate on AEW. Okay, bro. I when the shows have done good ratings, they've usually had decent stuff on the show. When I put that stuff over. The show is not doing good numbers. And I'm pointing out why the show is not doing good numbers. You have tons of people on the show that nobody could give two shits about. Nobody. I mean, you can have your smart mark face. Even your smart mark audience bailed on you this week. Lost 20, but 760,000 people. I, I, I was shocked. I did not think the number would go that low. I thought it'd be back around like 900, 880 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's what was, like, that's what was yeah. predicted like by, by your melters and everything. They, they, were, they were saying this week, I love to know the excuse because they were saying this week, well, that's it now. No, nothing. In, no, no more wrestling is going up against the NBA, except I think right. one episode of Raw. So <laughs> yeah, so he said no more AW versus NBA. Let's see what happens. Well, well, here's here's the funny thing about that narrative too. I, I want to talk about this. Isn't it fascinating, right? That every week that AEW didn't like go up in numbers, it dropped a little bit and stuff and all that. Dave would always talk about like the competition from the NBA, and this was during the regular season, like during the NBA competition from the the the, the hockey during the regular season. Okay, then when the playoffs started, like there was an actually significant chunk taken out of the numbers, and it's like, yeah, dude, it's like nobody your your competition is not regular season basketball. It's not competition. Playoffs are competition. It always had been. It's like nobody watches. It's like if you think that like your show did not do good because of a regular season basketball game between the, you know, the Milwaukee Bucks and the Boston Celtics, and like you know, I, I'm, you just have no, you're just making excuses, you know. But like the playoffs have proven that that's where the numbers are. But the funniest thing about this now is to show that the playoffs maybe really didn't even affect the wrestling audience because the wrestling audience is their own animal or this own echo chamber of weird people that don't like sports and they just like wrestling. It's like I, I. 
I mean, I was really surprised that, that it went down this much. Were, were you surprised that they dropped this much in the numbers? Yeah, because I mean, yeah, I do see that stuff, and this, I, I, I laugh at his news and and whatnot, but I still look at him and think, all right. So, I mean, I remember when I was 13, 14 years old. One of the first things I read was WrestleMania three didn't do ninety three thousand people. So. I was interested in in why Dave Meltzer was saying that because he was the guy that was my first experience of him um, was was when I heard this story that WrestleMania didn't do didn't do that number. So statistically, when he speaks and he says, "Oh, this is going to happen," and this NBA games affected it, you'd think that it would be some sort of even if it's like marginalized, even like he, even if it's up a slightest bit, you would take credit. I don't think then that they're doing under the one because of the NBA. I think they're doing under 1 million because it's right. I don't understand how I don't understand how CM Punk does 1.4 million on his debut or whatever it was 1. and 3, yeah. all the, and, and they don't hold anybody at all. They're, like, they're down to four they're down to 480,000 people on Friday night. Like well, they've lost prim- like 70% of their on, audience. He's now on, he's now like primarily on Mondays and you can't hit a million people. Like you you can't book um you can't book something week to week to book a million people. Like, what is that telling you? Like you hired, you, you, you hired Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan and CM Punk and, and all these people. And you're doing the same number that you did in the pandemic. They're doing yeah. the same number they did in the pandemic. The pandemic number was, was eight, nine, whatever, or, or maybe even more than this number they did this week. So they're moving completely in the wrong direction. No matter what spin they put on it or whatever, at the end of the day, this is how, this is how business well, works. Let me they've ask you spent, this. They've spent more, sorry, they've spent more money, right? Obviously, their outgoings are higher to have the same result. So ha- that's not good business, is it? Let me ask you this. Why do you think that I've got, I know why I think these, these numbers are underwhelming. What's your take on why these numbers in AEW are underwhelming? Because you don't have to watch it. Because on a week to week, on a week to week basis, you ain't going to miss anything, that, that anything significant. Like it's not, it's not must see. Like you can miss two weeks of AEW and dip back in. The, the title change on television this week was this week was rare, but you know if you if you've got stuff to do, like the title change. But, but what is a title change? There's 13 titles on the show now. Well, that's another problem as well. <laughs> so, you know, okay, let, let me ask you this here. So I, I, I we, know listen, right we know we know every time uh, like like there's there's a there's top guys that that go 20 minutes with like job guys and, and they win. Like we know that Jade Cargill is never losing. We know Punk's never losing. Um, we know Wardlow's never losing. Like, what's what's the intrigue? Everything just keeps rolling on. Like, they'll, they'll turn around and say, oh, that's long-term booking and whatnot, but if it's the, not. Perfect example. If this was the UFC, right, and Dana White was booking, like, these matches, he'd be booking fights where, like, every fighter was, like, an 8-9-1 to nine to one favorite against mm. the other guy. Like, there'd be no intrigue about, like, in any of the fights of who's who's going to win. Like you know, the winner of the match before they starts. I say, you know, if if you okay, were to, if you were to tell me that Punk would return on a show that was a you know supposed to be a competitor to WWE, and Brian and Moxley and Jericho were all there, just guys that I'm a fan of, and I wasn't watching it, I wouldn't I wouldn't believe you. I can't tell you why I don't care to watch it, but I just really don't most weeks. You know what I mean? I think that's right. that's a prevailing attitude. Like everyone well, that's yeah. there is like people's you know that community's favorites. And yet, they got seven hundred well, some here, thousand. This is this is ultimately, I think, the problem with this, and I think this is why I say all the numbers point to this narrative. Okay, is that this is you know Tony Khan is from the Wrestling Observer message boards, right? So he's a you know smart mark invested message board guy. Dave Meltzer, did, um, can I use the word disciple? I guess if you read those, you know, talks sure. to Dave. Dave is the guy. That is the the like the match raider guy on record. The you know the, this is the guy that's going to tell you how good the matches are going to be and how good they were and stuff and all that. And AEW, Dave is rating these matches four stars, five stars, four and a half, five, five and a half, six. You know, bro, it's like the the highest star ratings in the history of professional wrestling, right? And it's like you're if you're telling somebody, it's like, bro, you got to watch AEW. These matches are unbelievable, right? And I'm, uh, you know, I'm a lapsed fan. And I'm watching, you know, I used to watch WWE. I watched AEW the first night. I didn't, you know, they had 1.4 million people, their first show ever. And here we are, the, the, the two and a half years later, we're, we're half of that with no excuse, okay? 
And I turn it on. I'm watching, hearing about all these great matches. And I'm looking at all these guys openly slapping their thigh every single time they kick somebody to simulate the noise that you're hitting the person where I can see that you're faking hitting the person because you're making the noise that you're hitting him and you're not hitting him. Or you're not hitting him hard. Okay? And that's constantly throughout the show. I'm also watching you guys every match. And in the middle of the match, you're stopping and you're letting the guy forearm you in the face and you're doing it back and forth. And, like, I'm hearing, like, how great these matches are. And I'm looking at these matches and going, bro, this looks very fake. Like, like you're completely – and then these guys – but the echo chamber does not view these things that way. They look at this as, like, these are great matches. Well, what we're, I'm looking at like, bro, this, this work looks very fake. Everybody's doing dives, and they're all standing there looking at the guy waiting to catch him. Like, like there's so many fake, terrible things these people are doing in the match. And these matches are getting four and a half and five stars when they <laughs> should be getting one and two. It's the, like it's the, the work – you, you know – and I'm saying over the course of time, you're trying to draw fans. Bro, the work has got as much to do with it as anything on this show. The work is not good in AEW. And I'll say that as a professional trainer that trains people, they're doing things that I would tell the guy, do not do that. Or let, let, at least let me show you how to do it to where it doesn't look as fake as you're making it look. What you're saying, you know what, saying? So, what you're saying exists on so many, so many levels. Like as I listened to a podcast the other week where they were saying, how terrible it was that, how stupid it was that the Street Profits, uh, it was a non-title match against the Usos and why they won by count out. <clears throat> the Usos shouldn't be this protected. Uh, the Street Profits, the, uh, WWE, is they're, they're, these are pride AEW guys. They're going, WWE is so dumb. You obviously let the Street Profits win the non-title match and then you book the, um, and then you book the title match. Yeah, because this week, uh, Jerry Pahashka, he beat Glover Tashira and they had a five round fight. And then on the next pay-per-view, he's going to get to fight for the title because he, because he already beat him. Because that's how sports works, right? But these people <laughs> live in this like vacuum where they're convinced that this is what happens. And, and with what you're saying as well, with, they're convinced that guys will stand there and go, you hit me. No, now you hit me. Now you hit me with those, with like, with like Osprey was doing. Right, there's, exactly. There's a lot of, if you want to get the casual audience back, there's a lot of stuff that you need to break and rebuild. You need to I say it all the time. Right you, yeah. need to, you need to, these habits, these stupid things that have like crept in that have become the norm, they need to go. And in, re, and in response to what you were saying with the, the problem with the, the booking and whatnot, it's too much a case of, oh, you know, we got this guy. Oh, we got this guy. And oh, Adam Cole is Adam Cole. And, and oh, we, we got to push some of our own guys. We got to, we got to get, we got to push the Bucks. Bucks can't lose. Uh, we got to do something with Kenny when he gets back. Uh, Handman Page has to do something because he's a champion. We got to get Orange Cassidy on TV. No. Listen, this is how you book a wrestling show. And I've never booked a wrestling show, but this is what I would do. You get a blackboard like this. You put CM Punk's name at the top and you say to your creative people, what are we doing with CM Punk today? What are we doing with CM Punk this week? That will we'll book the most important. We'll book a big thing that he's doing. He's going to either cut a promo or the guy that he's oh. feuding with is going to do something with him. And then we start working our way down. And it doesn't matter, like... If Orange Cassidy has nothing to do or somebody has to lose or somebody has to put somebody over, you go Punk, Moxley, Brian, and you make sure that they all are on the show for 15 minutes In your week. strongest and, angles. In right. your strongest angles. Your strongest that's, characters. That's, that's just how you do it. Bro, you could ask him, like the funniest thing is, who are the top two, who was in charge of the, the two companies, who was in charge of the two companies during the, during the highest period of ratings in the history of the business? Eric Bischoff, Vince McMahon. You listen to anybody that's worked with these guys. When Eric walked into the meeting, what are we doing with Goldberg? What, what's Nash, you know, what, what's the NWO doing tonight? What are we doing? Tonight? When Vince, what's Austin doing? What's Austin doing? Like you heard Russo tell us. He's told the stories a million times. What's Austin doing this week? What's Ross doing? He didn't care about everything else. You know what I'm saying? But your big angles drive your shows. And that's like a, a tried and true formula. They don't have any big angles on these shows. They have everybody doing they, – they don't have any big ma- – like all these talent. Like the funny thing was – on Raw, they had AJ Styles versus versus Seth Rollins. It's like a decent match of two like guys that are pretty high up on the card. They have anything like that on this show? The only thing like, they had the, on this show, the only thing they had on this show, which achieved the goal of trying to get people to watch the pay per view, was John Moxley coming out there and oh, having let me to read, con- I, I gotta read this. I gotta, I'm having read to con- this. and convincing people how long he'd been chasing that guy. Okay, let me let me read this because I, I gotta read this <laughs> this segment. This segment was so busy, it's ridiculous, right? All right. 
I'm, I like I like because I, I read Jason when we do the reviews of the show. I go on J- Jason Powell. He does a review of the shows. He's on ProWrestling.net. It's a good review, and I like Jason. Of all the dirt sheet guys, Jason Powell is my favorite guy because he's probably the least of like the like marks like these other people and stuff. Everything. And, and the funny thing was too is like Jason Powell was like wrestled. You know, he was a pro wrestling torch guy for years, right? And you know, I, I play fantasy football since 1983. Okay. And I always went and got the magazines and stuff. And I got this one of these magazines, Fanball Magazine. And I was looking and flipping through the, the, the fantasy football magazine. It's the, the editors. And one of the editors is Jason Powell. And I was like, is this a Jason Powell from Pro Wrestling Torch? So I reached out. And he was the first and only dirt sheet guy that I ever started conversations and had a relationship with. And we would talk like, you know, we 10% of the conversation was about wrestling, 90% fantasy football to the point the year that Randy Moss, and this is why I always respect Jason Powell, when Randy Moss went to the New England Patriots, Jason Powell was the only person in the entire fantasy football community that had Randy Moss as the number one, like like that that's number one on my list. And the year that he had to broke the record, you know, he was unbelievable. He was the number one guy, like you know, bro, bro, Brady broke the record and stuff. He was the only guy that bought into to Randy Moss. So every year after that, me and Jason Powell would always converse about the you know, we'd talk fantasy football mainly, right? So I'm, I'm going to read you. I'm going to read you his th- th- this segment. Okay, a video package aired on the Hir- Hiroshi Tanahashi versus John Moxley match for the Interim AEW World Championship match. Will headline the Forbidden Door pay per view. It featured comments from Moxley, New Japan W voice Ke- Kevin Kelly, and Tony Schiavone. Ross hyped that Tanahashi Moxley would meet face to face after the break. John Moxley makes his entrance to Wild Thing from an area opposite the actual entrance ramp, and Hiroshi Tanahishi. Tanahashi makes his entrance while Ross told viewers who haven't seen him wrestle that they have missed out. Tanahashi entered the ring and went face to face with Moxley. A holy <laughs> champ broke out. Of course it did. Moxley had a mic and said he's been chasing Tanahashi for a long time, and now finally here you are in all your glory, Moxley said. Moxley said his work in New Japan has always been about Tanahashi. Moxley said there are a lot of belts, titles, and tournaments, but there's only one man they call Ace, and that's Tanahashi. But not for long, Moxley said. Tanahashi reached for the mic, but Moxley pulled back. The crowd chanted for Tanahashi. Moxley said Tanahashi deserves respect and he's an inspiration to him and others. Moxley referred to himself as the best professional wrestler on the planet. He said a lot of people are just pretending, whereas he lives at night in and night out. Moxley said there's a lot more in the line of Forbidden Door than just the interim AEW championship. And Moxley said everything is online and he plays for keeps. Moxley said when the dust settles, Tanahashi will call him ace. Then Tanahashi took the mic. And before Tanahashi can get a word in, of course, fought Jericho comes back out. Okay, with Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti. Jericho threatened to burn Moxley's face with a fireball, and an unimpressed Moxley held up both middle fingers. Jericho boasted about beating Tanahashi the Tokyo Dome, and Tanahashi told him to shut up in, like, kind of like the... I know a lot of Japanese guys, they speak perfect English, right? The, the, these Japanese wrestlers can't speak English, like him and even, even Nakamura. Uh, Jericho called for the rest of the Jericho Appreciation Society to come out, and as they did, Lance Archer and El Desperado attacked Moxley and Tanahishi from behind. Excalibur started, this is another funny thing, Excalibur started talking about Suzuki Gun. Jericho stood in the ring and introduced Guevara and Connie as the newest members of the JAS. Guevara and Connie made out. That was actually funny because they actually tongued each other, which you're supposed to do, and like a lot of wrestlers will not do that. I thought it was, that was funny. Jericho introduced Archer and Desperado and said they were on loan from Minoru Suzuki. Jericho announced that he will team with Suzuki and Guevara to face Wheeler, Utah, Shota Umino, and Eddie Kingston at Forbidden Door. Eddie Kingston, Wheeler, Utah, Santana, and a bald Ortiz right now and helped run off most of the heels. Tanahashi performed a sling blade close on a Desperado. Tanahashi removed his shirt and then spoke to Mox in the ring while Wild Thing played, and the broadcast team hyped the Forbidden Door event. What did you think of this segment? So Suzuki turned heel? And he's now a heel with Jericho. I thought he was a babyface the whole time. I, when he came I don't even know. I don't even know what a babyface and heel is on the show. I just yeah. know when Wheeler, when these guys came out and brawled, this brawl looked awful. Especially Wheeler, Utah, who can't brawl. He looked. Fa- he looked like he was just like play fighting. So this is this is atrocious. I, and I'm good, like, and they're wondering why this thing did seven hundred sixty thousand. Uh, they explained everything in two minutes to get you interested in this. And like, no, like everybody's like probably looking at each other. Like, what, what on earth just happened here? What What, what did you think about this, Billy? <laughs> let me I give you Powell, let me give you Powell's point of view on this segment. Okay? okay, here's Powell's POV. Has Tony Khan thrown in the towel when it comes to selling the masses on the Forbidden Door, or does he think this is the most effective way to sell the show to everyone? There was too much happening in that segment. The focus should really been dedicated exclusively to the Forbidden Door main event. 
but they also felt the need to revisit Jericho's history with Tanahashi and set up a six-man tag match. And say that he'd lost. Right. There were were too many people involved to really make the main event feel special, those who weren't already excited about it. And all this is coming from someone who's excited about Tanahashi versus Moxley. So, yeah, this is just a good, this is like a cluster to me. I I still don't, nobody nobody cares. The the numbers show that nobody cares. If you're a casual fan, right, and uh, Moxley's saying he's Moxley's saying he's chased this guy all around the world. Then he's making this guy out to be a big star. And Jericho comes out, which I did not know because I'm not well, somebody that watches all these things. Um, Jericho then right. comes out and says, "I already beat you." Like how? Right. Who does that, <laughs> how does that? I know. There's like, yeah. and I know that Jericho lost to um, Orange Cassidy and um, right. and and Eddie Kingston and and all these other bums in AW. So how am I now interested? You, you, Bro- you, Mo- Moxley got me interested, and then they ruined it like five minutes later. So there's another interesting segment coming up here. So they've <laughs> they've got this new title called the All Atlantic Title, and there's a tournament. They love tournaments, and they and, love belts. I, I didn't think that. Right. I didn't think that. <laughs> Miro, belts, but... This is funny because Miro has been off TV forever. Even though he's never, it's going to be in the European bell or something. Do you know, do you know what's funny? They, they, over here, I don't know. Do you get it on your commentary or is it? No, you obviously do because I watch it on Fight. They're saying we're the number one wrestling organization in the UK. Do you hear them say that? We're number one in the UK. No, I don't hear. But they do. They do say it. But um, okay, just just to clear that up, they're on free television. They're on a channel. If you buy a TV set, this go right. If you okay. buy a TV tomorrow and turn it on. They are programmed in. So however many homes we have in England, we have 60, 65 million people. All 65 million people can watch AEW. WWE are on a channel where you need to pay £25 a month just to have it, right? That's um, right. thirty five. That's $35. They're on a sports channel, which has WWE, um, uh, Italian football, and the Champions League, Right. So mm-hmm. if you want to watch those three things, you need to have this channel. And they're claiming to be the number one wrestling organization in the UK. And it, this this company's a joke at this point. Like, it's right. ridiculous. So, so you know, Miro has been off TV forever. But I guess he got his creative juices flowing uh, when this All-Atlantic title was announced. So he's back, on, he's back on TV in the All-Atlantic title tournament. He wrestles Ethan Page. So this is two, two heels wrestling each other. Nine minutes, Miro goes over, whatever. Um, then they do Tony Storm versus... They did a Tony Storm interview, and it was like, whatever. Uh, Tony Storm against Britt Baker, and Tony Storm beats Britt Baker. Um, I was, I'm was, not, i not surprised about that, but th- this is actually funny. There, there was, like, Jamie Hayter interfered, and then... I, I always talk about this. It's like how these girls on the, on the AEW, they, they, we call them the Kmart Divas. They look like they shop... They buy their clothes at Target and Kmart. And the WWE girls look like they buy their shows at Versace and and uh, and Dolce and Gabbana. You know, so do you do you notice that, Billy? Or am I am I like one of the only people that don't? You're, what you what they have, what they don't have, and what WWE do have, and they've had for years and years and years is a seamstress, right? Uh, so everything with the WWE is probably yeah. Worth- they, you know, they have the art department. Yeah, but like, well, but, no, they, they, but, but, but could you imagine? They have a lady. They have a lady that's been there for years. Could could and, you uh, imagine? You're a girl. Okay, and this this is fascinating to me, right? You see, like some of the like like bro, you know, a random chick, okay, can can look hot, wear a bikini, wear a thong, have her <laughs> hanging out, and get like seven million followers on Instagram, right? Bro, these girls are on live TV, and it's like they they can't even comprehend. It's like, all right, this is my I, I'm on live television. Maybe a million people are going to see me. I need to dress the part here. And it's like their choices of the clothes they're wearing. It's like, you know, I'm like, what, 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 why did you think that looks good? Like they, they dress down. They dress like slobs. They, they, they dress. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. If, I don't get if there's somebody there saying, hey, look, you know, you need to dress up. Like, is that like kind of like, are they so inclusive in that locker room or like, you know, that, that like, you can't tell the girls, hey, that, that doesn't look good. Ty Conte's been doing it like last few weeks when she, well, she took, gets it. Uh, since she's down here, like yeah. like one girl gets it, and that I mean it's ridiculous, you know. Um, so they do. Tony Storm wins. Thunder Rose. They're, 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 this is a hodgepodge. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not interested in this. Uh, another person. I, so Stokely Hathaway was interviewed by Shivani. Um, well, oh my God! This, I got 
Bro, pull this up. Because this is what I see. Willow Nightingale showed up. Let's see if you can find this clip, Joe. Okay. They're actually selling this girl as like they 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 brought this girl up on for an interview dressed like this to sell her match on Friday against against uh, what's her name against Jake. Jade Cargill. Well, what, pull this up and you got to see what this, this girl looks like. This is hysterical. And like you wonder like like they're they're, bro, they're they're billing these matches for Rampage, and the show's doing like four hundred thousand change people. And I'm like, this is one of the reasons why you're only doing four hundred thousand people. Like this is what like this is what you're hyping for people to watch on Friday night. Do you got it yet, Joe? No. Pull up. You go to YouTube. Willow Nightingale yeah, interview yeah, Dynamite. I, I did. Just yeah, got, there's just got one from a month not on, ago. Not. Well, just pull the one up from a month ago. AEW probably took it down. <laughs> I would love to be bro. I, I, if they brought me in, like I, I, they should bring me in to consult with some of these characters on the show for like. Okay, you need to do a makeover. Like, like you need to like spice your your, your look up in here, and this is what you need to like wear and stuff. Thing. Remember what's her name? The Ember Moon no, was no. complaining that they would have meetings in WWE. Because the girl to, to, to the girls like dress like Mandy Rose or something like that. It's like yeah, dress like Mandy Rose. You know? It's not a promo. It's a match. Oh, forget it. Then. Okay. No, the, the promo doesn't do justice. But but yeah. she, she does not. She looked like an indie girl, right? And I'm I'm sorry, but that's what. Oh, she hold on a minute. I hold on a second. I get, keep talking. I can I can actually maybe do this. Huh? Okay. So uh um oh don't don't play the clip of the show. We'll get we get flagged. Well, are you, well, are you just gonna play it anyway? Yeah, but don't play it on. But yeah, but, but on a YouTube clip though, it has to be a YouTube clip. You can't. You can't play the like. We can't show the uh, footage f- like from the show. You know what I'm saying? Um, all right. So next, wait. Who did she? Is, who uh, did she confront or whatever in the promo? Jade. J- J- Stoley Hack. Ha- what's what's his name? Stokely. Stokely Hathaway. Ha- is that his name? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, you have it? No, I'm, I was looking through uh, to see if his if if his, if they had it under his name or something. But what about on the AEW site? I just, Maybe I just, there. I just looked. Okay, yeah, so next is uh, all right. So next, Adam Page comes out for an interview. Cole comes out. This angle will never end. And Jay White comes out and beats up, beats up. What's his name? Um, White informed Cole that he wouldn't be defending the title against him either. I hold the prize. I hold the power. White said. He boasted that it's the Switchblade era. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, then they have the. Ta- I, I fast forwarded through the ladder match because I heard that the Young Bucks won. I mean, it's just, I'm sure it was just a spot. I saw a spot where they had they'd taken a bunch of tables and put them on top of each other so somebody could crash through them. So you know, I was like, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm not fans of matches like this. But I guess Cage turned on Jungle Boy finally afterwards. Did that happen? Yeah. Am I missing? Yeah, this? yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, what was um, what was what they didn't show was like the, on fight TV. Like uh, sometimes it carries on going. Like they go off mm-hmm. the air and it carries. They show like an extra five minutes or whatever. So he right. was like going up to uh, Jungle Boy's family, going, "Is that piece of your son? Is that piece of your son?" She was going. Oh, so he was cussing like that, like trying yeah, to make it sound like real. He goes, Do you raise that piece. Of and uh, his sister turned around and goes, "Well, it's not his family because his dad's dead." Yeah, but so it's his mum and his sister. Oh, his mum and sister. Okay, I was going to say. Yeah, so she, and uh, the sister and the sister turned around and goes, go, "She goes, go f- yourself. You're a nobody." So. <laughs> that was all. <laughs> she said that on wait. She said that on TV. Yeah, well, it's the that was on, that was on fight. That was on fight TV. Yeah. <laughs> she actually said <laughs> yourself with with the with the said the word out loud. Yeah, yeah, I can show you. Oh my God. I'm, I'm looking for that. I'm looking for that. Yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. I've got it up here, but we're not allowed to show it, right? right. No, you you play it. Just play it. Paychecks in one night, which is why I'm the best at what I do. So, oh my God, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I know what you're here for. I love the look. I love the afro. I had one too back in the day. You want to be a baddie. Yeah, I got some No, 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 no. I don't want to be a baddie. Come on, get together. You don't remember? You really don't remember it. Willow Nightingale? We worked together. We crossed paths so many times in the past. But you must not remember because... You're so far paying attention to everybody else, chasing their success, clapping for them and their successes. Well, I'm trying to prove myself. So this Friday on Rampage, I want to accept Jade's open challenge for the TBS championship. <laughs> One thing, with all due disrespect, that's crazy as hell. Well, I'll see you on Friday, Willow. It, it's Willow. Let's go back to the ring. <laughs> Let's see, did you, did you, do you know what she looks like, yeah? Yeah, I know. I know what she looks like. I watched it. Like, you know. One thing with all the you don't show it. Well, you can see what she looks yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. That's like I know. It's like I don't know. Um. 
so then the uh, the main event they they go over the jungle yeah whatever so that was our AEW review enjoy the rest of the show boom um Billy where where can we find you at um I got that clip at the end I'll show you when we're off um let me just sort my camera out just tilt it yeah so I'm at um, the show mid first of all they they blown the MJF thing MJF was the most entertaining thing on their show they they did an angle that was hot. And literally two weeks after they're doing, they've done this angle, they've lost 20% of their viewers. So I don't know how anybody can sit there and explain to me that this was like, you know, I don't know. Maybe this, they'll this, panic. This is, this, is, this is an epic fail. Maybe they'll panic right? well, and, and bring, it back, it bring it back sooner. If, uh, they're if trying they, to make yeah. it look real. Like, yeah, that's yeah. What exactly. To the point you lost, you lost short. Like, like, think about that. So that was your angle. You're trying to make it look real. And we'll, we'll just lost 20% of our audience for trying to make it look real. I mean, if that, if that, was, if that was your idea... To try to make it look real, and you lost twenty percent of your audience. That's like, all right, guys. You know that does that. That does not. People do not give a about that. You know. So, uh, where can we find you, Billy? Okay. Yeah. So, lockbetting.com is where I give out my betting picks. Um, the Nations League is over, thank God, because everything else this month has has been hitting so like uh, at such a great rate. Like the um, we had the end of the French Open where we, we hit a load of futures. Uh, we've had um, winners this week in Queens and, and Haller. Um, we are still undefeated for the entire season in the WNBA. Obviously, I'm not handicapping that, but somebody is, and they're really, really good at it, and uh, having a strong season in hockey and NBA as well. So if you want to come on board, it's lockbetting.com. Um, with, I wouldn't normally say sign up this late in the month, but if you don't, you're going to miss Wimbledon futures. And bearing in mind what we just did with French futures, like I wouldn't miss those. So yeah, lockbetting.com. Uh, my gambling Twitter is at lockbetting.com. So lockbetting.com without the dot. My wrestling Twitter, as you know by now, is at K100 Informer. Uh, new logo on there. Joe's going to make it into a t-shirt, which you're going to, which you're all going to buy. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's everything. All right, well, bro, thank you for uh, being on Keeping 100. Um, Coney will be back with us next week, I'm sure. And thank you for uh, giving us some extra time this week, Billy. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, man. Peace. All right, so cool.